Did you know there's a hotel in England where you can stay in a room with actual lions? I shouldn't be <laughs> that close to a lion. <laughs> In this video, we get behind the scenes access at Portland Reserve to find out what on earth lions are doing in the countryside of Kent. As kids, we loved zoos, mm -hmm. but then as adults, we didn't really like them at all. No, not so much. And with a child on the way, we would really love to be able to share these kind of animal experiences with them, but in a way that we're comfortable with. When we arrived here, they gave us one of these cool buggies to go and explore on. And it is so much fun driving around looking at animals. Once upon a time, and actually not that long ago, we would have said that any animals in captivity is wrong, but as we age and wrinkle, we are changing our mind <laughs> because that is definitely a simplistic, idealistic way of looking at the world, which really isn't so black and white. Unfortunately, there are loads of issues around wildlife, such as habitat destruction, trafficking, poaching, all these kinds of things. And at the end of the day, there are animals that need to be rescued and there are animals that can't survive in the wild. So what do we do with them? So that's why we're here, to investigate how we feel about these kinds of places. Places. Portland Reserve is a breeding sanctuary for rare and endangered species who aim to return animals born here to protected areas of their natural habitat. We've always struggled with the idea of animals in captivity and even experiences with non-captive animals are not without their issues. Of course, nothing can be a completely natural animal spotting or encounter, but we want to see if the types of experiences offered by Portland should also have their place. Are you ready for this? I'm not sure if I am. <laughs> this seems absolutely bonkers already. This is the lion enclosure right here. And over there is where we're going to be staying. We're basically in the enclosure. <laughs> we're part of the enclosure. There's no sign of the lions at the moment. So I guess we just go and check out the accommodation first. Oh, wow. This is a wood fire bar that they actually come and heat up for you. It takes two hours for them to heat it up, so we've asked them to heat up for this evening for us. This will be something we get to enjoy with hopefully the view of lions behind us. Oh wow, this is fancy. <laughs> oh wow, it really is a lodge. <laughs> wow, yeah, I mean it definitely has those lodge vibes, doesn't it, with all the wood and everything. I mean clearly, the main feature has got to be the window straight into the enclosure with the lions, right? Yeah. But I don't want to get too excited and look over there just yet. First, let's have a look around the accommodation. Got a lovely bathroom here. This is great. It's all private, this whole area. This is ours, so we can just be strolling around in the nuddies. Oh, wow. Yeah, you've got a view. You can see the coast down there. Yeah. There's also an upstairs. I love a good spiral staircase. Oh, a bedroom's up here. I think this lodge can sleep four, so there must be another bedroom downstairs. This is lovely. Oh, you can see into the enclosure over here, through the bedroom. Imagine that, coming here with our kid, and you could just be sat there watching lions. <laughs> That is a terrifying noise. That is a noise. I'm not sure if it's that loud for you guys, but it instantly sends a shiver down my monkey spine. It's like a guttural noise, isn't it? Like, ugh. Well, there's a sleeping big lion. That's a full on male lion just outside our window. Well, who's making the noise? Oh, she's making the noise. There is a massive female lioness just out there. Wow, just sat in the sunshine. Wow, she's beautiful. Meet our new neighbors, Wilma and Zulu, who are both Barbary lions, which have been extinct in the wild since the 1940s. These two lions are two of only around a hundred of the subspecies that exist in captivity today. Through here, I'm guessing this is the master bedroom. Oh my goodness. Wow, what a view. <laughs> we can be in bed watching lions from our bed. What? <laughs> it, it feels so wrong, right? Because in every sense of the word, like if you can see a lion from your bed, 
you should be terrified, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at her girl. That is a full on female <gasps> lioness just prowling around outside of where we're staying. Oh my goodness, where has she gone? I'm expecting it. Oh, oh my goodness. <gasps> Can you hear that? Yes, that is a terrifying sound. I didn't think within seconds of coming in here that it would just walk past the glass like that. Oh my. It's kind of funny to think that we have a TV in the room <laughs> and the thought of just watching something tonight like Love Island on the TV <laughs> while you've got the ultimate show going on over there. <laughs> I wonder if they get noise complaints at this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> We have such a nice sunset here this evening. Winter sunsets are always so beautiful. There is this really cool sort of summer house that we just come across and apparently it rotates 360 so we could actually either have a view of the lions or have a view of the sunset or the sunrise tomorrow morning. Emma is living her best life over here. Look how idyllic this looks. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god! I never thought I would see a day where I'm in the bathtub with a male lion. It just, oh my god, and another one. <laughs> this is so crazy! It's nice you're able to tear yourself away from Vogue for a second. I'm just using it to cover my boob so that you can publish this on YouTube. <laughs> How was that? So, so nice. I feel like this has been the year of the most surreal bathing experiences I've ever had. <laughs> like we had that tugboat experience in Switzerland, the incredible onsens in Japan, yep. and now I took a bath inches away from both male and a female lion. It's been a year of really weird baths. <laughs> Emma now has pathetically cold baths, all in the name <laughs> of our son. <laughs> but for me, I still like it hot just like Marilyn Monroe and it's a very specific reference that not many of you will get but I'm gonna chuck more logs into the fire imagine if you were just walking around at night and you started hearing that in the wilderness that would be terrifying truly terrifying like you know they're around but you can't see them oh. See, but he's sniffing her butthole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like us. I could assure you, no buttholes are being sniffed behind the scenes. <laughs> you look deep into their eyes. <laughs> it's just wrong. I shouldn't be that close to a lion. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say that it's uh, quite weird to see them constantly, predictably, patrolling around the edge. It does make you wonder how much space they would typically be patrolling in the wild versus here. Yeah, I think for places like this I have to keep reminding myself at least that you know I can't have them in this kind of perfect environment and these things can't survive without the care that they receive. So it's a, it's a constant weird battle in my head. Mm. That one it's... second it's wow or wonder, this mm. is incredible. Then I flip to like, oh, should they be in something like this? And then I flip back and remember that they can't survive. So it's this yeah. or nothing it's a, compromise. a lot of the time. Yeah. Alex and I are starting to feel a bit hungry now and I think there's a choice of restaurants around the reserve that we can go to. So we are just down here. 
and we're going to be making our way all the way up to here and going on a fun little 15 minute buggy ride to get there. This is fun. I do enjoy this aspect of things like driving around in the buggy, getting lost in the middle of a safari park. <laughs> I like that they give you free reign. Like, yeah. I shouldn't be allowed to drive this buggy around this safari park at night. <laughs> it just feels weird. Like, yeah. it feels like it should be closed and like, I shouldn't be allowed access to this. It, they're putting a lot of trust in their guests, aren't they? So we've just arrived at the restaurant and it feels really weird. I can't imagine there's going to be anyone else in there, right? Yeah, surely, apart from guests, who's coming to the safari park to have dinner? And there can't be that many guests in the middle of winter right now. And how do they have like five restaurants? Yeah, <laughs> so there's probably like one restaurant per guest. I, it feels in my mind like we're going to go in there and it's just going to be, they'll be waiting for us and they're <laughs> open because of us. I feel bad that they've had to open the whole kitchen <laughs> just for us. That's how British we are. <laughs> I've spotted at least one other guest in there. sound of birds before, the sound of dogs, even the sound of chaps, but never the sound of a lion. <laughs> Whoa! Waking up and seeing a male lion at the foot of our bed, that's crazy. Sleep. I mean, I slept as well as I could. I'm pregnant, so I don't sleep that well. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta come and see the sunrise over here, guys. I love how these lions represent us in the morning. Oh yeah. One's a lazy piece of Oh, the female. And the other one's getting his steps up. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be more accurate. <laughs> He's probably got ADHD too. Oh, there you go. But then sometimes she gets a bit of love and affection. We were lucky enough to be able to meet with the animal director, Simon, to learn a little bit more about the place and the work that they're doing here. How much land do you have here? Uh, 600 acres we have here. Wow. And we're very lucky that we've got this kind of space for the animals. We try and look at every single species we have. Are they in a breeding program? Can they go back to the wild? How important are they? Yeah. Uh, we know there's a certain amount of animals that just um, won't ever go back. Yeah. And then there'll be a certain amount of animals that will. And the ones that won't ever, what are the reasons? Um, it may be but that they're mentally not able to go back, physically right. not able to go back. It can sometimes be that there's no place for them yet. Right. You know, there may be that there's so many high numbers that you're not in a position where it's time to actually sort them put them back into the wild. Do you reintroduce the rhinos? Uh, we have reintroduced eight rhinos back to the wild. We've taken them back to South Africa and Tanzania. We're looking at the next 
set of rhinos to send back. So we've got another three earmarked for Africa. We're just trying to find the right place at the moment. Okay. Of the eight that have gone back, all of them are bred apart from one. Oh wow. wow. So we have been quite successful. Every single one of the females that went back as their babies and the male, um, the original male, Buana, when he went back, back in the early 90s, late 80s, he actually had about 20 kids. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and so then we got... Well, yeah, it has. It's great. I mean, essentially, yeah. we got the largest collection of rhinos outside of Africa. Wow. Is it 10% of rhinos in Tanzania have been introduced by you? Uh, yeah, so we've sent a lot of our animals in there. I mean, wow. again, some of these countries haven't had rhino, black rhino for a long, long time. Mm. Their numbers have plummeted over years because of hunting and such like for that lovely horn that you can see there. Um, and we might stop and go and see the Indian rhino. Oh, cool. So big. Yeah, stroke is here. Oh wow. Oh, that's <laughs> not how I expected it to feel. How much would a horn go for on the black market? It's worth more than gold and worth more than drugs. Really? Oh wow. That's why they hunted so much. We're talking about ten thousand pounds a kilo sometimes. Right. Um, and I guess the only way of getting it off is coming them and then. Yes. That's it pretty off. much. And again the numbers you, they lose at about fifteen hundred rhinos a year. Africa. Do they have feeling in their horns? Uh, not really, it's no different than your fingernails. Oh, okay. okay. Essentially it's keratin and hair right. all mixed together and stuff and everything. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in it. It's, it's, it's no different than biting your fingernails. Okay. What's your proudest achievement? Uh, for me it was the Javan Langers and the Javan Gibbons. Uh, I helped design and build the centre out in Java um, and then to see your first primates come into your centre and actually then be released. That was amazing. Wow. I that. Like how much would it would you say it costs to keep a lion? Strangely enough, lions are reasonably cheap. Okay. Mainly because you can get a lot of fallen stock from around the area that you can feed them. But if you're feeding meat, we spe we we get about one and a half tonnes of meat in a week to wow. feed our entire uh, big cat section. Mm -hmm. And we've got about 35 hunting dogs, we've got yep. 10 lions, we've got um, four tigers, so on and so forth. Yeah. And that costs about a, mm, a couple of grand wow. a week, I yeah. think, to feed. Uh, whereas primates, I'm probably spending three to four thousand pounds a week on fruit and veg. Wow. Oh, wow. But the idea is we want them to have the best diets, we want them to be in the best situations, we yeah. want them to have the best outlook for the rest of it as well. So even when we're sending animals back, like our Javan Langers or Javan Gibbons, we try and adjust their diets accordingly so they're getting more leaf, more kind of stuff they might find in the wild, even yeah. you know importing in fruit that we'd actually find in the wild so that we okay. can actually get them used to bits and pieces. Uh, you can see them on the side there, that's what they look like. They're the ones we send back to Java. Yeah. So essentially we're very lucky that we've sent about 25 you can just sitting in the back of the enclosure there oh yeah and they're amazing we've actually had them breeding in the wild which is fantastic to see the animals that you've bred at your park go back into the wild and actually breed in the wild mm. and protect as much of that land out there as you can because uh like java is the most densely populated area on the planet so when you send them back do they go back as like a group you can do it in several ways. We have sent individuals back. We have sent them back as a group as well. Um, it depends that you might. You, what you want to do is you want to send some back, and then you want to mix them with wild caught ones okay. or wild born ones. So there's ones taken out the pet in, pet industry out there right. as they're taken for pets. You rescue them and you mix them with our ones because our ones are socially better, whereas the ones from the pet trade and stuff are quite mental and stuff. Mm. But they have wild knowledge, so they learn off each other and they work together oh, as a real interesting. good group, so they can learn off one another. It's clear to see that they are doing a lot of good work here at Port Lim. I feel this experience is where my head is overruling my heart because mm. I can't lie that seeing animals in captivity walking around in the same spots back and forth isn't hard to watch. Yeah, because it's not their natural environment, their natural environment is in the wild but they do look like they're really well taken care of and looked after, they all look incredibly healthy it's clear that they're not plucking the animals from the wild here and they're not the bad guys in that sense. In an ideal world, this place wouldn't exist because yeah. people wouldn't be doing stuff like having exotic pets, poaching, encroaching on habitats, all those kind of things. Yeah, and also we're not trying to tell you guys what's right, what's wrong and what you should feel. That's a conclusion you can come to on your own. Yeah, we're just processing our own feelings exactly. when it comes to stuff like this. Exactly. And at the end of the day, we're not doing anything. <laughs> no. And these guys are doing something. Yeah. And 
That's got to uh, count for something, right? Yeah. Otherwise, these animals are just being left to die, which I don't think is the best scenario either. Yeah. Or they're left in dodgy places which aren't treating them so well. So at least like they, Tiger King. Like Tiger King. Jeez. Yeah. So at least they're not in places like that, and they do have space to roam, and they are being looked after. Even though, of course, the ideal situation would be different. Let us know down in the comments. How do you feel about animals in captivity when it comes to places like this, zoos, etc.? Mm. I love hearing every side of the debate with something like this. Also, how do you think places rank? You know, we've got zoos, we've got places like this, we have wild animal encounters, which are sometimes, I think, far worse than experiences like this can be. Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down in the comments below. If you like the video, give us a big fat thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Nothing left to say, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans out. Thank you.